Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and you're looking at our planet Earth being orbited by all these things that we launched into space. This right here is the image of pretty much most of the things that we have in space right now. Most of them are obviously things like satellites, but some of them are just debris or leftovers from previous missions. As you can probably tell from the title though, that's not really what we're talking about today. However, it's related. And what we're actually talking about, well, let me actually show you first, I'm going to look up one of them here. And what I'm looking for is known as Cosmos 1461. As you see here, it's not just one piece. It's something that seems to have fallen apart somewhere around here, or maybe somewhere around here. It's a satellite that used to be in one piece and then it broke apart, most likely due to a collision with the micrometeorite. We're not really sure just yet. But why is this object so important? This object that was launched in 1983 is a nuclear reactor. As a matter of fact, as you can probably tell from the title, we're going to be talking about a lot of nukes that are still in space. This right here that's orbiting above our planet at a distance of about 524 kilometers at the lowest and moving at seven and a half kilometers per second, one day is going to crash to the surface of our planet. But for now though, we're pretty safe. What do you think is going to happen when it actually does crash though? The uranium that's actually present inside of this um, capsule is going to uh, break open and spread across a very large area on our planet. In other words, it's going to very likely cause a nuclear disaster. But like I said, not anytime soon. So first of all, let's actually start with why we have these things there. And to start, I wanted to actually look at this first. This is the only American nuclear reactor that's orbiting our planet, known as SNAP-10A. SNAP-10A was part of what's known as a snapshot program and it was essentially a test of nuclear reactors in space. It was launched, I believe, in 1965 and unfortunately stopped working after 43 days. But it was a really excellent test for us because they planned to launch a lot of missions using these nuclear reactors that you see right here. And uh, many of these missions eventually succeeded. They actually uh, are the reason we have so much stuff, so many photos and so much data from missions as far away as Pluto or even farther. Uh, Voyager, for example, still uses these. And this mission was instrumental in helping us develop uh, these further space exploration missions. But it's still in space and it's going to stay there for a really long time because its altitude is um, over 1200 kilometers. It's, it's really far from Earth, so it's probably not going to fall onto the surface anytime soon. But guess who else sent a lot of nuclear reactors into space? Soviet Union. And this is actually a schematic from one of the more popular reactors they use known as BAS-5. So let's start with the scariest ones. Um, Soviets had this program known as Topaz, uh, where they developed a relatively powerful nuclear reactor. One of them was launched right here in 1987. And as you can see, also kind of fell apart. The problem with this particular mission was that it was meant to have two parts. First, you launch the um, actual satellite. It kind of uses the nuclear reactor for approximately a year or so. Um, and the mission here was to actually use the active radar to scan the ocean underneath the craft. It was basically a very complex um, observation mission or ship tracking mission where several such satellites were launched over the years. And since these craft uh, could not actually use solar panels as they would spend about half of their time on the dark side of the planet where there's basically no sun and they were using an active radar, they decided to try to use nuclear power. And for the most part, it was actually quite successful, but the problem is it was not always successful. And that's where the problems begin. Oh, and by the way, all of these missions had an extra step where they would actually release their uh, nuclear capsule and try to place it in the safe orbit, uh, much, much higher than anything else in space, where it would stay for like millions of years. But not all of them succeeded, unfortunately. And Cosmos 1818 was one such mission. It basically never released its capsule and it stayed in orbit and it will stay there for a few thousand years. Now, the assumption right now is that in about 30,000 years, it's actually going to return back to the planet and um, all this uranium that's there, and there's about 50 kilograms of it, which is actually a lot of uranium, it's about 90% enriched. So it's actually not enough to make a nuclear bomb because 90% uh, enriched uranium is usually used for nuclear reactors, but it is enough to contaminate a large part of the planet when it actually does finally fall onto the surface. And on top of that, there is actually two such reactors um, that Soviets launched. There's two Topaz reactors. 
with the other being Cosmos 1867 right here, falling apart into a lot more pieces and basically being even more scary and dangerous. And um, just for fun, let's take a look at some of the other nuclear reactors that they place here. Just so you know, there's about 30 of them. Um, I believe it's actually 31. And each of them contains approximately 50 kilograms of uranium, giving in total over a ton of uranium that's orbiting us in space right now. This is what a lot of these satellites look like, and um, a typical nuclear bomb would actually have about a third of uranium by mass. Uh, but these satellites needed a lot of power, and they needed to have nuclear power. So each of them basically has about 50 kilograms um, of that stuff in it. Um, and the thing is, back in 1979, one of them actually malfunctioned so badly that it crashed back onto the surface of Earth in Canada. And it just so happens that it created a nuclear disaster that costs the Soviets tens of millions of dollars that they had to pay Canada, basically for the cleanup. Then, back in 1985 and thousands of miles to the south, somewhere right here, um, there was actually a detection of very unusual radioactive strontium um, present in the samples of the rain. And that suggested that basically the um, Canadian cleanup wasn't really perfect and a lot of the radioactive material that may have been in one of the lakes here actually made its way down south into the American uh, plains. And that was kind of scary and dangerous, but by then the Soviets already paid off everything and uh, didn't really care. And one more of their satellites unfortunately lost control in 1983 as well and fell somewhere here near Brazil, but luckily for the Soviets in the ocean, not on the actual coast of Brazil. And so they avoided another disaster. So the idea here is that a lot of failures happened with the Soviet um, nuclear satellites and a lot of them unfortunately were basically hazard to the planet. These Rorset uh, satellites um, were launched for over 12 years and the vast majority are still in space, still orbiting the planet and will probably stay there for a long time. But most of them have basically created debris, radioactive debris that will one day fall back onto the planet. You can actually find the list of all of these satellites from this particular program in the description below. There is um, basically a lot of them still out there. And what's interesting is that there is no planned recovery or anything, so all of this uranium will just stay there. But luckily for us, uh, there is nothing planned to return back to Earth in the next few thousands of years. But I guess one day if we actually need to go back there and collect the uranium, we still kind of know where they are. You can actually track all of these satellites using this tool that I'm using here, known as Stuff in Space. And you can find every single one of those satellites and see where they are and maybe even plan a mission, if you're Elon Musk that is. Other than that, hopefully all of these satellites stay in this region for a while and hopefully our planet doesn't get any more radioactive waste on its surface. Because, I mean, 50 kilograms of uranium that's a lot of radioactivity. On that note, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Don't get too scared, nothing serious is going to happen anytime soon, but I just wanted to let you know what's happening up there above your heads. 31 nuclear reactors, and most of them still pretty active. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.